Number 15. Assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of salts in contact with the solution containing a common ion. Show that the changes in the initial concentration of the common ions can be neglected. Okay, so then we have calcium fluoride, CAF2 solid, and this is in 0.00133 molar of potassium fluoride, KF. Now, since we're starting off with the solid here, right, and this is going to dissolve under dissolution, there has to be a KSP value for it. And that's when I went to the back of the book to find out what the KSP value of CAF2 solid is. Keep in mind that KSPs are always going to be for solids. So we have the KSP, 4 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now let's just write the balanced equation because we have to show what this is going to be dissolving into. So we have CAF2 solid is going to come to equilibrium between the two ions, right? And the split is between the calcium and the fluorine. So Ca plus F. We need the charges in the upper right-hand corner, right? But we can either look at the periodic table or we could just crisscross our subscripts, right? There was one calcium and two fluorine. So this one crisscrosses up, telling me that the fluorine was a negative one. And the two crisscrosses up, telling me that calcium is a plus two. But you could also look at the group numbers to see uh, those charges as well. So since they have charges, these are both aqueous, aqueous. And now let's just make sure that this equation is balanced. One calcium, one calcium, but two fluorines. So I have to put a two in front of here. Now this is balanced, so let's just bring this over to the side. Since we have a balanced equation, we got to write the KSP expression. And remember, that's always this right here. KSP is just equal to the products raised to the coefficients because no solids are allowed, no reactants are allowed. So in this case, our formula would be KSP equal to the two products, Ca2 plus times the F minus, and now we just have to be careful that we are making sure that we raise them to the coefficients. There was only one calcium, right? There was no number in front, so that's a one. So I could raise this to the first, but nobody cares. But the two in front of the fluorine, I have to include. So that means that I'm going to square whatever the fluorine concentration is. Okay, so we found out that the KSP is 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11th. But the thing is that I don't know these concentrations. So we have to go back to the balance equation to just pick out variables. However, when you notice that you have another ionic compound, aka salt, we have to see if there are any common ions. So how we're going to do that is we're first going to say, okay, this is KF, this is potassium, that's in group one. All group one metals are always aqueous. So KF is aqueous, which means that it's going to dissociate 100% into its ions. So I'm going to write down that down over here. KF aqueous will break down 100% into its two ions, and the break is between the potassium and the fluorine, right? So we have K. That's a plus one charge. It's in uh, group one. And then the fluorine, minus one, aqueous. And now we're starting off with 0 0.00133 molarity. Use your ratios to find out what the other concentrations are. In this balanced equation, they're all ones. It's a one to one to one. So that means that whatever this number is, it's going to be the same number for these two. So the K plus would be 0 0.00133 molarity. And the fluorine would be 0 0.00133 molarity. So now you say, between these two compounds, is there any ion? Is there any ion that is the same? That's a common ion. And yeah, you got it. The F minus is the thing in common. Once you have a common ion, we're going to do an ice table. We love these. So maybe let me pull this a little bit over. So we've been dealing with ice tables for like two chapters now. So we got this, right? Remember, solids, no one cares. So I'm just going to plug this all in. 
And this value is your starting amount for your fluorine. So I'm going to start off initially, that's what I is. Initially, I'm going to start off with 0 0.00133. Did I start off with any calcium? No, because calcium is not the same as potassium. So zero. Since I start off with zero, I can only go up from there. So the change, remember, this is plus x because it's just plus 1x. That's the variable that we don't know. And then this would be plus 2x because it's a 1 to 2 ratio. And now equilibrium, we're just plugging these in, combining them, right? So 0 plus x is just x. 0 0.00133 plus 2x is 0 0.00133 plus 2x. However, now we have our two values to plug in to our uh, calcium and our fluorine. This should be x, and this would be 0 0.00133 plus 2x. However, there's a catch. We want to make it easy for ourselves. We want to see if we can neglect the change in the concentrations. Basically this one, right? If we keep this plus 2x, we're going to have to do the quadratic equation. So what we like to do is we like to say, okay, let's pretend that this 2x is in here. And we're going to do the 5% rule at the end, which we've been seeing time and time again. If our percentage is less than 5%, that means that no change really has happened, and we can keep our answers. So let's see. 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11th equals... I have this and I have this. This has to be squared. So I have x and then 0 0.00133 squared, right? Well, let me just bring this closer. Okay, there we go. So 0 0.00133 squared is 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11th equals 1.7. 689 times 10 to the negative 6th times x. And now we're just doing our math. You get it right. Divide by 1.7689 times 10 to the negative 6. Divided by 1.7689 times 10 to the negative 6. And we're going to get an x value. So 4 times 10 to the negative 11th divided by 1.76. Ooh, what, what, what is going on there? Four, four times 10 to the negative 11 divided by that number. And now I'll cut it off after three sig figs. So 2.26 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's a molarity value. Now let's just make sure that this obeys the 5% rule. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this x value and always divide it by your initial times 100. If that is five or less, we were able to neglect the change. So if I just quickly just do that, this divided by 0 0.00133 times 100, yeah, I get 1.7%. So this checks out. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write the answer. We go back to the X values. So calcium, was just x, so that was 2.26 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity, and then the f minus, remember, was 0 0.00133 plus 2x. When you're doing this calculation, we actually have to bring this back. So I have to plug in the x value for this. So I'm going to say 0 0.00133 plus 2 times 2.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. So 0 0.00133 plus 2 times 2.26 times 10 to the negative fifth. And I guess 3 sig figs, right? So 0 0.00138. It changed it very, very, very minimally. And now where to put these answers? I guess I'll put them up here. Oh, that's beautiful. And those are our two answers. So just color in, color, 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 color. 
and you're done. Okay. Um, I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to talk to you guys in later lessons. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.